Hi class, welcome to the um, trial test class. My name is Mr. Doan. Now today we're looking at test number 21, which you've got right in front of you. Let's go through some of the questions together. Let's have a look at the very first question, question one. Now Victoria Street has 112 houses in it. Number consecutively, one to 112, okay? So that means we've got 112 houses. House is 18 to 25 inclusive, right? So you include 18 and 25. A knockdown to make space for a reserve. How many houses remain in Victoria Street? So it's 18 to 25 inclusive. Now, if you were to subtract 18 from 25, that's only give you seven, okay? But it is inclusive you've got to add back one. You've got to allow for the first house to be included as well. So make sure you add back one. Or you want to double check, count with your fingers. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Eight. Okay, so it's eight houses, not seven. Okay, so don't make the mistake if it's inclusive. Don't make the mistake of just 25 minus 18 will give you seven. So that means eight houses were uh, demolished, were knocked down, okay? So how many houses remain? So it's got 112 minus eight, which would give us 104. So in this case, the answer is B, okay? That's for question one. Let's look at question seven on the next page. Now, to make a packet of mixed nuts, N mixes together three bags of peanuts and one bag containing 20% almond and 80% pistachio. All the bags have the same volume. What percent of the volume of the packet is almond? Okay, let's list this down. This, this seems a bit tricky. So question seven. Now, so we got three bags of peanuts and one bag containing, so there are four bags all together. Okay, each one of these contain the same volume. So you've got three bags of peanuts Now in one bag, now this one interestingly got 20% almond, and so A for almonds, and 80% pistachio. Okay, so we want to find the percentage of the total volume of the packet which is almond. Okay, if there's four bags in total, they contain the same volume, so it's 100% divided by four, so each one of these bags will made up 25% of the volume, of the total volume. So therefore one bag, the last one which contained 20% of almond and 80% of pistachio, will consist of 25% of the total volume. So 25% is one bag, so we want to work out 20% of 25% and 80% of 25%. But the only one we're interested in is the almond. So what is 20% of 25%? So 20% of that, you can argue is 25% times 20%, which is 20 over 100. So that's 0.2. So 0.2 times 25% will in fact gives you 5%. Okay? So in this case, the answer is going to be A. So you need to work out the volume, the percentage volume for this one particular bag and then work out 20% of that actual percentage. So 20% or 25% is actually 5%. Okay, so it's A. Let's have a look at question 13, just over the page. Now, Andrew's watch gains 30 minutes every hour, while Steve's watch loses 30 minutes every hour. At midnight, they both set their watches to the correct time of 12 o'clock. So both of the watches were correct at 12 o'clock. What is the correct time when Andrew's watch reads 6 a.m. and Steve's watch reads 2 a.m.? Now, you know that Andrew's watch goes fast, faster by 30 minutes for every hour, and Steve's watch is slower by 30 minutes for every hour. So one is currently at 6 a.m. Let's write that down. So Andrew, is currently at 6 a.m. and Steve is at 2 a.m. Okay, now they were both correct 
at midnight. Okay. Now, because Andrew is faster, so that means his watch is way too fast. Steve's watch is slower, so his watch is way too slow. Okay. Interestingly, Andrew's watch is 30 minutes faster every hour, and Steve's watch loses 30 minutes every hour. So the actual correct time, because they gain and lose the same time for every hour, so the correct time should be the average of these two. So the average of these two between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. should be 4 a.m. So this should be the correct time. Okay, That's four hours since midnight. Andrew gains 30 minutes for every hour. Okay, So we can double check. There's four hours. So he gains 30 minutes for every hour. So that's going to gain two hours. So his watch should be 6 a.m. Steve loses 30 minutes for every hour. So for four hours, he's going to lose two hours. So he goes backwards to 2 a.m. So therefore, our correct answer, as we double check, is 4 a.m. So that's going to be C. Okay. Now let's have a look at question 18 over to the page on page number 4. Now what we've got here is an isosceles triangle. Triangle ABC is isosceles. An angle A has measurement or measure degree of 80 degrees. What is the degree measure of angle C? So I can create that. This is an isosceles triangle. So these two sides are the same. So this is A, B, and C. Now angle A has a measurement of 80 degrees. So this is 80 degrees. Because this is an isosceles triangle, angle B and angle C are exactly the same. Now you know the sum of all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 80 degrees will give us 100 degrees. So therefore the sum of angle B and C must equate to 100 degrees and they are both the same. So if I divide that by 2, that would give me an angle of 50 degrees. So each one of these is 50 degrees. So the angle C is 50 degrees, which is the same as angle B. So in this case, the answer is C. Let's have a look at question 20, which is two questions down. If 12 people can construct three houses in 20 days, how many days would it take 10 people to construct four houses? So let's work it out. So let's write down the fact that's been established. So we've got 12 people. They can construct three houses in 20 days. Okay, so 12 people for three houses in 20 days. How many days would it take 10 people? So we've got 10 people to construct four houses. Okay, how many days? Okay, let's try to reason this. If you've got 10 people, right, as compared with 12 people, you're going to be about 1.2 times slower because that's going to give you a factor of 12 on 10. Slower. Because you've got less people. So the factor is 12 on 10. Okay, 12 people as compared to 10. Now you've got four houses. So obviously that's going to take longer as well. Okay, so that's going to be a factor. So this would take longer. So the factor is going to be four on three. Okay. It takes 12 people to build three houses in 20 days. For 10 people, that will be a factor of 12 on 10 slower. To multiply four houses, so it's going to be a factor 4 on 3, multiplied by 20 days. Okay, so it's a factor, one factor times the second factor, multiplied by 20 days, and that would give us the answer. Okay, how long would it take for 10 people to build four houses? So that's going to be, um, let's try to simplify where we can. It's 20 divided by 10 give us 2. 12 divided by 3 give us 4. Now, let's just double check. Okay, 4, 8 would give me uh, 16 times 2. That will be 32 days. 
Okay, we just double check, four times four is 16, times two is 32 days. So that makes a bit of sense because we know that there's less people and we've got to build more houses and therefore it has to be much longer than 20 days. So in this case, it actually took, would take 32 days. So the answer in this case is going to be C. So it's 32 days. So again, if it's slower, it's going to be factor 12 to 10. More houses, it's going to be factor 4 and 3. And multiply by 20 days, we give us 32 days. So that's question 20. Let's have a look at question 27. On page 5. Find a rule for the toothpick sequence as in the diagrams below. Okay. Question 27. Now, if you count the first diagram, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you got 6 matchsticks. Second one, you've got 6, add another 1, 2, 3, 4. So the second one, you've got 10. For the third diagram, you've got 10 and you're adding another 4. Okay, so it looks like we are increasing by 4 each time. Now, we want to find the sequence, okay? So if my difference is going to be 4, so I can write that down. So the sequence equals to 4, which is the difference each time. Let n be my number, n representing each one of these terms. Now let's look at the first number. My first sequence is going to be 6. So that means if n equals to 1, 4 times 1 give me 4. How do I get 6? I need to add 2 to it. So this is my sequence, 4n plus 2. Let's just double check. If n equals to 2, which is my second term, so it's 4 times n, which is 2, plus 2. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, so that's correct. If n is 3, so it's 4 times n, which is 3, plus 2. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2, it will give me 14. So my sequence is actually 4n plus 2, which is c. So 4 times the sequence number plus 2. So that equals to C. So remember, work out the, the difference each time. That's going to be your factor. Multiply N, which represents each one of these terms. And look at the first term. You might need to add or subtract a number to find the first term. In this case, we need to add 2, and that will give us 6. As it turns out, this is also our sequence as well. Now, I trust as you look through these examples that you found them very useful. Now have a go at the rest of the questions. Try to use some of the stuff you learned from the few examples that we've done here and try to work through it efficiently. Make sure you read the questions carefully at the same time and work through it quickly as well and enjoy it at the same time. Bye for now.